NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell is facing pressure to speak out after a fan at the at, uh, Kansas City Chiefs game uh, at the stadium over the weekend was spotted with black, fa uh, black paint covering half of his face and wearing a Native American headdress. Some Twitter users, however, noted that the article from Deadspin erroneously stated that the fan was wearing blackface. That was in the headline at Deadspin. Users on Twitter pointed out several fans in attendance noted the other half of his face is painted red. So this is uh, another one of those kind of viral social media controversies. Um, the Deadspin article is, I mean, crazy in my view. It's, it's headlined, the NFL needs to speak out against the Kansas City Chiefs fan in blackface. Um, and it's a, it's a little boy, like he needs to be denounced by the NFL. Um, he is not, you know, committing the um, very appropriate wrongdoing of, you know, darkening his skin to mock black people, which is a historical trope, but is in fact, you know, wearing the colors of the team. The other side is red. Um, it's just not, like, it's not the same thing. Yeah, so the, the Deadspin article does address some of that. It does say, so here, here's what they say. They say, um, here's some unanswered questions that are raised by this shot. Why did the camera person give this fan the attention? Why did the producer allow that camera angle to be aired at all? Is that fan a kid, a teenager or a young adult, uh, despite their age, who taught that person that what they were wearing was appropriate? So I, I do think that the focus is a little bit less on the kid and more on the decision of the well, then you it's know, like camera saying, why is the people? camera operator opening him up to the criticism of what exactly what we're about to do? Well, no, I think it's a little bit different. So I would say that fans are going to fan, and people are allowed to, you know, write, let's say, a vulgar message on their chest. And you would expect that if someone wrote, um, eat S-H-I-T, uh, Mm -hmm. Eagles, that the, the camera would choose not to put that on national TV, right? It would be considered to be inappropriate. They might get a, some kind of uh, FCC strike. You know, you can't curse on TV, and you wouldn't zoom in on a sign that said something mm -hmm. inappropriate. Now, the question is, if we, if we believe that is the case, you know, is the decision maker, is the camera operator or the producer of the show making a different kind of decision? Is this a reflective of their values and that they think this is appropriate? And then if you abstract that out more broadly, there's this bigger question that the NFL and other leagues have been dealing with for a long time, which is whether or not it's appropriate to have team names and mascots that are Native American people. So all of this is kind of like a nesting doll of concerns that I don't think... To the extent that people are mad or focusing on this little boy, I agree that that's wrong. And it's clear that he's not doing blackface in a traditional way of what blackface means. But I don't think that quite gets you out of these bigger questions about the league's obligation to deal with these kind of um, messaging issues around their mascots. Sure. I mean, it does. Uh, there was a recent um, controversy that um, got covered at Reason while I also work of this um, this boy at a middle school who had on the black, his entire face was not covered with black. He had like the black kind of war paint look, which is a sports thing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's just a very different thing. Mm -hmm. And um, he was suspended from school because of it. Um, actually, the Foundation for Individual Rights and Expression defended him uh, as well. I cite them a lot lately, um, you know, pointing out that, you know, he can't, this is legitimate expression, not political expression, just expression, and you can't punish him for this. It was a public high school. Um, so there's a lot of conflation. Like, over time, I think some some media critics, some of these sites like Deadspin have, have taken a very broad view of what counts as blackface all of a sudden that is not um, based in, like, historical reality and is just, like, looking for people, usually kids, to be mad at. So that was kind of the backdrop as this was happening. Obviously, there are some people who think the entire, the Chiefs logo and the headdress is offensive and is not what they should do. Obviously, other teams, sports teams, have pivoted away from um, from Native American um, names and imagery and that kind of thing. You know, it's like people can make up for their, their own mind whether they're offended by the Chiefs name, that kind of thing. But yeah, the Chiefs is rough. <laughs> I mean, look, I understand so? growing up with a franchise and you're committed to it. My family's from Cleveland. We've obviously just shifted to the Guardians. Every, everyone seems kind of okay with it. We're here in D.C. The, the Nationals were what before? Uh, the, the, the Redskins. Redskins. Yeah, the Redskins. I, the Redskins. I mean, like, 
I think the Nationals isn't as good a name as the Guardians, but that's for DC to work out. Picking a bad new name. Oh, the Commanders. Is, the Commanders, sorry. The Commanders, the commanders yeah. Um, so that is that the is Nationals what it is. Were what the were the senators before I think. Oh well, that's an upgrade. <laughs> that was a shame that happened a while ago. Uh, but you know, people are going to have their subjective opinions about that. I think we all have to acknowledge that our attitudes to that kind of iconography and they, don't they do like that like tomahawk chop? That's so one of their cheers. Doing that. Small blessings. You know, it just doesn't sit right with a significant portion of the country the way that it did 50 years ago. And you can argue that, you can debate it, but I kind of think that ship has left the station and this is where we are. And so if you want to be appealing to the broadest possible audience, and this is what it's all about, right? Advertising dollars and making money for these franchises, they're going to make decisions that are in line with that. And I do think, you know, whether or not it's fair, there are gonna be there are gonna be these little backlashes when your camera operator also they kind of did this kid dirty only doing the one side of his face <laughs> like but when your camera a camera operator makes those kind of production choices you're gonna get backlash and you can't you can't silence like you can't yeah. when you know repress people's speech just don't so either you don't care double down and everything's fine and your team is your team all these very bland names because everything is so on PC it's gonna be it's gonna be only animals because that doesn't well in Cleveland the Guardians there's a there's a bridge that you go over that you that leads you right up to the stadium that's kind of big and majestic and like Art Deco mm -hmm. and there's two figurines like guarding the edge of the bridge that are the Cleveland Guardians and they are a landmark in and of themselves. So I actually think it's kind of fitting and really nice. Mm. And you know because of like the physicality of they're literally like looking over the stadium and it's it's kind of nice and historic. Hey, I don't know. I think we're headed to uh, what is it from community the Greendale human being. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that well, come on, Robbie. Most most sports teams don't use Native American names, and the Cowboys, the Patriots. I mean, there's a lot of options out there that aren't. I don't know, but where does this? What about the uh, the Vikings? Is the Vikings offensive? The Minnesota Vikings. If, if Vikings, Vikings, if Vikings pillage people who don't exist. If Vikings uh, who don't exist think. Uh, what do you mean they don't exist? Well, the contemporary Vi Vikings. Well, they're people of Nordic descent. Sure. If if the descendants of Vikings not going say, say it's a problem, then then they can't. But I also I would think laugh that, at them. that the first Native American <laughs> I would laugh at them. I think the reason like Redskins went before, let's say Chiefs, is because it wasn't just Native Americans. It's not just the Seminoles. I mean, there's teams that are named yeah. after peoples. It's Redskins. Okay, Redskin. okay. All right. well, I'm not fighting over Redskins. So it's Vikings, and also it's the skin you know, color and Celtics. And Chief is a position. Like a commander sure. or a captain or sure. a, you know what I mean? Sure. So I think the chiefs chiefs might and have. And the headdresses are cool looking. Like no one can wear one just because a group of people historically in this country wore them. You can wear them. As this kid, no one was arresting him and hauling him off. This is in Ireland. It's not illegal yet to wear <laughs> a headdress. Yeah. And I support his right to wear one. But I, I also think, I'm it's sorry. It's cool and fun. You have to be willing to deal. You have to be willing to deal with the backlash. And I don't not wear a headdress because I think it's illegal. I don't wear, I don't not wear a headdress because I don't think they're beautiful. I choose not to wear a headdress because I know that there are some people in my community that are gonna be offended by it and it's not worth it for me and I don't want to offend them. They have experienced a lot as a people, as a community in the United States of America and it's just no skin off my back to just avoid wearing a headdress. So that's, that's the balancing test. The kid can wear one. And the parent can encourage them to wear one, but that's between them. That's their that's their own parenting choices. Mm. All right, uh, that was our debate on this subject. <laughs> you can weigh in in the comments tomorrow on Rising. Investigative reporter Michael Schellenberger will be joining us in studio for an exclusive interview. Very exciting. You won't want to miss it. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the move, we're now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. See you later. Bye bye.